Hello, net runners. This is Scott. You probably wondered what the hell happened to me. I posted the last video from this tournament back on August 23rd. The tournament took place on July 19th. As I'm recording this, it is October 22nd, 2014. All those dates were in the year 2014. Are these games even relevant anymore, considering how many cards have come out since then? Well, this game is because the Replicating Perfection deck being played by ben, uh, Dan, uh, the third seed in this tournament, is still very popular, uh, even though it has been modified by new cards. His opponent on the right is Ben, the ninth seed, playing Andromeda. This is game number 27 in the elimination round of the Philadelphia, Pennsylvania Netrunner Regional Tournaments 2014 that took place at Red Caps Corner, which is the, uh, the name of the store that we played Netrunner in. While well, we're waiting for the shuffle up, uh, let's talk about a few things. First of all, Netrunner is not the only thing I do. I've been doing a podcast since 2005 called Geek Nights. You should go listen to that. Also, we do videos about other things, and you'll be seeing more videos uh, this time of year now that my schedule is freed up a bit of non-Netrunner activities. I also got more video equipment. That helps a lot, too. Uh... Also, what have I been doing between August 23rd and today? Well, you know, I went to PAX shortly after August 23rd, and then I had to, you know, cover for the things I missed while I was at PAX, and it got cold. And uh, But now, uh, my podcast co-host went to Australia for PAX Australia. I went last year, but not this year. So I'm sitting here with plenty of free time not podcasting. I can get back to finishing up these Netrunner videos. Something else I want you to notice, uh, let's talk about this game now. <laughs> Something I want you to notice in this game of Netrunner is uh, Dan, our player on the left. We've seen players who shuffle the cards in their hand. I do it too. We've seen fast players or players with quirks or whatever. Of every player I've seen of any game, period, in my entire life, Dan is the champion. He is so fast. He shuffles the cards in his hand so ferociously. And he's using dice. I would probably be ridiculously frustrated playing against him. So why does he do this? It's not entirely, you know, a twitchy kind of thing. Uh, I don't you know, if any aspect of it is, I'm sure we can find out. But he's doing it, A, the replicating deck is slow. This isn't fast advance. He's only got 30-something minutes. He's got to finish on time. So playing very quickly uh, is a very good way to play a slow deck and make it tournament viable, uh, to finish under the time limit, not go to time. Also, playing very quickly uh, can disrupt your opponent, right? You know, if you go quickly, they have to think quickly. You know, you don't give them a lot of time during your turn for them to think about what they're going to do on their turn, uh, you know, at the very least, right? Plus, you know, constantly flipping your cards. Uh, you know, this is going to get to someone who's not extremely strong-willed. So what's happened in this game so far? Well, a huge, a pretty typical Andromeda opening. No data soccer, but we got a Desperado. We got a Katie Jones. We got a Fairy to safely run some ice. Uh, Replicating Perfection drops the Sundew straight away behind an ice. R&D unprotected, but now it is. And you know, I don't think he really cares too much about protecting R&D because you know his ice are kind of uh, his agendas are hard to steal. Except for maybe Nisei, you know, future perfect. It's like, okay, we'll play the game, see, and then I'll put it in my hand. Look how fast he plays that celebrity gift, and we do see a future perfect in there. Another celebrity gift, mental health clinic, Koma Inu. Looks like, you know, a pretty standard replicating build for these days. Uh, I guess Andromeda had to throw a card out, chose to throw out that emergency shutdown. I don't know if I like that play because, um, you know, I think one of the ways that you can possibly hurt the replicating deck is if you can force it to res its ice. Uh, you know, they won't have the, you know, you can slow them down with a bit of money, you know, slow down their economy. And if you can de-res some of those ice because they're expensive, like de-res a Koma Inu, they res it again and then you parasite it, that's pretty good. So he uses an inside job to kill off the Sundew, which, you know, he, he has... 15 credits over there, but it's just a lot, but it's not enough to car carry him through the whole game. He's going to need some more money. Uh, oh, in turns, that's brutal, right? So, <laughs> on the one hand, you know, did he get his money's worth from that sundew? You know, using an inside job to kill it off? Not a complete waste. 
right? That sundew's going to provide him with huge money if you don't take it out. At the same time, he interns it right back. Oh, it's so demoralizing. And he made you lose an inside job. That inside job probably could have gotten you an agenda. All right, run through the pup. Inside job again. So two inside jobs canceled out by an interns and a sundew. If he just draws another sundew, how sad is that? <laughs> how sad is that? Oh, man. But at least uh, he prevented him from getting even more money. He's down to 14 credits. He spent one on the pup. Uh, but as a celebrity gift, money is back. Oof, the money is back. Install. I'm betting that's, well, that's got to be a mental health clinic, right? In, in, in why would he install the future perfect unadvanced, <laughs> unprotected? I don't think there were any other uh, advanceable cards. All right, Data Sucker is here. Andromeda is getting efficient. Checking R&D every turn through the pup for two credits. Uh, loading up on Data Suckers. Filling Katie Jones. Drawing cards. Don't blink. You'll miss something in this game. Mental Health Clinic comes out. Will you remember that your hand can grow in size? Will you remember that? But will you want your hand to grow in size to give Comaino all those subroutines? Howard. Makes an appearance, and R&D gets more protection. He's got Parasite in this Andromeda deck. I think Parasite is very necessary to beat the Replicating Perfection deck, right? Pretty much every ice, a lot of these annoying ice that they use, uh, Sarugi, Koma Inu, are ice with a bunch of subroutines that are expensive to break with just about every icebreaker uh, available in the game but they're easily parasited into oblivion. Uh, I lost to one of these decks uh, recently, even though I was parasiting away the ice, and, and you know I just didn't, I was unlucky. I had three clone ships, it was a shaper deck. I just didn't draw a clone ship. There were only like two nasty ice I had to get rid of that were basically keeping me out of the servers in that game. Uh, if I would've just had a couple clone ships, you know, I would have been able to, to get rid of, you know, one more Koma Inu, one more Sarugi. Uh, would have denied replicating a server. Uh, I could have gone in. You know, they, they would have basically jammed up the agendas in HQ a little more. Or maybe I could have oh, gotten into HQ before they were able to make those secure remotes. But, you know, I drew through almost my entire deck. <laughs> uh, like three quarters of it or even more. Yep, see, Parasite. That big old Koma Inu cost replicating five credits. And boop. Cost the runner just like two. So two once, right? Like, that shows you the power of Pup, right? Runner spends two credits once. Koma Inu is gone. Uh, runner spends two credits on Pup every time. Now, if you weren't paying attention there, something quite silly happened, right? He ran... The Koma Inu ferried it, broke the pup with two credits. <laughs> then he pa on the same turn, you know, he saw an ice on R&D. I think it was a toll booth. Same exact turn, he runs the Koma Inu again. He puts the parasite in the Koma Inu, which is fine, because next turn it'll just die. Then he runs it again to kill it off with the data sucker. Okay, that's fine. Maybe you wanted to ensure that it was going to, you know, just die. But, I mean, you know, I don't see what the corp could have done about it otherwise, just waiting the turn. And then pays two for the pup to see the same ice again. So that was, you know, a misplay by the runner, uh, you know, using running <laughs> to see the same card in R&D again. He could have at least, you know, he probably could have, you know, done something else with that click in two credits. All right, here comes a remote. Install advance. Looks like an agenda. I mean, it's going to be an agenda. If you know the deck, right? Installed. It, there's no reason to hide... You know, this deck doesn't need to hide what it's doing with, with a trap or anything. It's like, yeah, look, if you want to run this, you're going to have to run a central. Then you're going to break these two ice. <laughs> oh, he ran the sundew. Interesting. All right, well, he's going to score his Nisei. I guess with no icebreakers on the board, it's sort of 100% guarantee that that remote with the agenda in it is going to have two different kinds of ice on it that are not going to make your day very uh, pleasant. So with only one icebreaker, you know, you run it, you're going to be seeing some trouble. Even with the Mimic, it's like, okay, I'll be spending a bunch of money to avoid pain with this Mimic. 
And then I'm going to hit some end-the-run kind of ice that I can't deal with. All right. Now he's going to run HQ. There's a Koma Inu. It looks like he's keeping his hand small, I think, because of Koma Inu. Koma Inu Mimic, right? Keep the hand small, break in cheap, don't lose cards. Uh, you could go with zero cards in your hand, but then you have to worry about, you know, a fetal AI possibly or who knows what. Eli, the greatest ice in the universe. He double clicked it to get his HQ access. And there is a future perfect in there. I mean, we knew it was in there from the celebrity gift. Uh, he hasn't dumped it. Howard's still hanging out over there. Going to play the game. This could be big. If he wins the game. Two versus one. Looks like the corp will keep the future perfect for now. He has the Nisei token. And it's because he has the Nisei token, he'll install Advance Advance. Yep. Well, we know that that's the future perfect. You got one icebreaker. Can you get in that remote? I guess you can run archives and then run the remote. And then he's going to use the Nisei token, so you need to run the remote again. So that gives you one click to do something else. Uh... I guess his one click to do something else was Mr. Lee. Because he ran, you know, security testing had just come out uh, recently before this tournament. So oh, now he's installing a clone chip. He's just going to let that remote go. Oh, no, he's running a final click. So even if he gets through, the Nisei token is going to stop him. He let the Eli end the run. I guess he had to. And there's the future perfect. See, wouldn't, you, wouldn't he have liked there to have one of the inside jobs uh, that he had used on a Sundu, right? He could have run Archives inside job on that remote. And then, you know, that second ice, we don't know what it is. But, you know, maybe he could have gotten through it somehow, either with the clone ship Parasite or the Mimic. And he's got plenty of Data Psyker tokens. Here comes the Account Siphon. He's going to double-click the Eli and... Mimic the Koma Inu with its tiny hand. And there's the Nisei. So he still got it. He still forced him to use the Nisei token. Um, so that's not too bad. Right? You use the Nisei token to block the account siphon. The account siphon would have brought the corp down to eight credits uh, and the runner up to a lot, which would have, you know, really it was about the runner gaining the 10 credits. Uh, the tag punishment. Uh, I guess, you know, if the corp was going to spend, you know, the f two, four, six credits to trash his KD and security testing. Uh, that would actually slow him down enough to give the runner some time uh, to do something. Okay, now I guess out of fear of a possible another siphon, puts another ice on HQ. He installed something in that remote. He's got to throw a card out. He's making mad money from Sundu in three, three, five credits a turn, basically, for doing nothing. All right, Corroder is out. So as long as he can get some money, he can break through. Oh, these quandaries are killing it. Killing it. Does not have any decoders. Quandaries are getting it done. Doesn't want to waste a parasite and a quandary, even though he could. Because you, you're going to need that for uh, something else nasty. All right, install advanced. So you install an unadvanced card. That's probably going to be Ash or Caprice. Now he's going install advance advance. So uh, it's actually a better case scenario for it to be Ash than Caprice. If it well, so Caprice randomly you might just win it. So he security tested archives. He's hitting the remote. He's got to break the Eli with credits so that he can run again, which is the correct move. There is a toll booth. That's something you want a parasite. So he's paying the toll using the clone ship on the parasite, and he does have. Five data sucker virus counters kills the toll booth completely. Good. And it must be Ash because if it was Caprice, he would have had to res it at the same time as the toll booth. It is. I think he's going to make the trace uh, unbeatable right here. The base trace on Ash is four. He's making it six. So, yep, that's that's basically unbeatable. He's going to trash Ash and run again, which I believe is the right move. Oh, 
That was only click two, so click three, empty Katie. Click four, run again. Data sucker the Eli down to make it cheap and use some credits. This is why I hate using dice, people. But for some reason, I don't know what it is, we need to do a scientific study on it. Why are all the people at the top of tournaments using dice? What is it about dice that is so frustrating to play? Maybe it's because they're frustrating to play against. You get an advantage using them. Maybe everyone's cheating with them. I don't know. <laughs> I don't see any cheating happening here. Um, but it's going pretty fast, so it's hard to tell. All right. Oof. Three ice on that remote, and, you know, you bet that he can res that. <laughs> uh, getting five credits a turn just for doing nothing. And only Wizard could get, hope to get rid of those. He's letting him security test archives because even though that's a big efficiency boost, uh, it saves ice for the remotes. A sneak door would have been really good in this game. Uh, look at that. That's probably a game over right there. Install, install, advance. Right? So he's at five. If that's a Nisei, it's pretty much any, it's, it's not going to be a three-pointer. It's going to be a Nisei. He's going to score it. So, you know, that's an Ash or a Caprice under there. Uh, how can the runner possibly... The runner would basically have to do what he did before. Run archives, run the remote, and then run the remote again. Um, but with the 12 credits and 2 ice there, is that even going to be possible? Not if you spend all your money on a Yog, but I guess you might need that Yog. Yep. And there's a pup. How many cards are in his hand? This, that kind of matters a lot. He just spent 2 for the pup. There is a Sarugi. So if he actually has enough cards in his hand, he could use the Mimic to just break one subroutine on Sarugi and let the net damage happen. But I don't think he did have enough cards in his hand. So it's game over. He chose to break all the subroutines on Sarugi with his money, making it impossible to break Eli. Uh, and that upgrade was either Ash or Caprice. So even if he did double-click Eli or some kind of magic, he wasn't going to get that agenda. And that is how the replicating taxation deck works.